You know, uh, it's been said that the way that God operates, being the just one, is that he doesn't walk by sight. He walks by faith. And faith cometh by? So whenever God wants to know that someone is somewhere, he doesn't look to see if you are there. He listens to know whether you are here. Does anybody understand? Because he's a faithful God. And faithful means he's a hearing God. That was why it wasn't that Jesus didn't see blind Bartimaeus. But until blind Bartimaeus shouted, nothing could happen. Do you understand? Because he's moved more by sound than by sight. Are you with me? So when God wants to know how to pour blessings, he looks for who is there. That's why David said, let everything that has breath. So there's only one way for you to be able to receive blessings this morning. Or this afternoon. This morning. I want you to tell God I'm here. But you don't have to say, I'm here. Because somebody else will say the same thing. You have to distinguish yourself. Let your shout bring a... Listen, a wall between your promise and your possession is coming down by shout. Is there somebody who's ready? There is the shout of the king. There's the shout of the of, of, of victory. Today, I want to hear all of them together as a shout of hangout. Somebody ready? Yeah. Now, I know some of you are not impressed with some of these things. Oh, come on. <laughs> but when you see the person at the next hangout and their level has changed, you know that they shouted. Is there somebody who understands what I'm saying? There are some changes that are accelerating because of the volume of the shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so in, in, in just about five, ten minutes, I just wanted to, I guess, I, I mean, we're going for a break, I understand, and we're going to be talking, and I'll be dealing with a few things concerning the men, and then we'll come back and have a, a big chat, but, but I just thought we'll do a little game. My own is not a big game, it's just very little. It's a mathematical game. Are you there? One plus one. Yeah? Somebody wants to fall the hand of their mathematics teacher here. One plus one. Eh? Eh? Okay, two. One times one. Ah. Okay. Half times one. Half. Okay. Half plus half. Half times half. Eh? One quarter. Everybody that said one quarter, clap for yourselves. So many of you know it that three times in the Bible there was a particular, or twice in the Bible there was a verse that was earlier rever referred to. So in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 24, God spoke about something that, you know, became the baseline for everything else. He said, therefore, you already know it now, shall a man leave his father and his mother and be joined to his so you realize that he had a wife before he was joined to her and they shall become one flesh abi so you see there that two things came together the question is were they added together or were they multiplied by each other Because you remember that one plus one equals what? And one times one equals what? So if two, one and another comes together to produce one, was it a, an addition factor or a multiplier factor? 
So you understand that marriage is not the addition of two people. Marriage is the multiplication of what both of them are carrying. Do you understand? Marriage has an exponential factor. Your level changes completely. When I, got, when I met her, I was living in a one-bedroom room. I didn't say one-bedroom apartment, oh. One-bedroom room. That is three walls and one door on the fourth wall. And, and, and it turned out that by the time we were getting married, my mattress was on the floor, and that, the, hole, the carpet had a hole in it. One day I was looking at our, our wedding picture and I said to Tara, I said, baby, you know, <laughs> you know, you're, you're mad. She said to me, what? That's very unlike you. You are, you are never rude. Why did you say that? I said to her, I was just looking at our wedding picture. You know, I would not have married me. <laughs> and I asked her a very simple question. I said to her, what made you decide to do so? How could you take such a risk? And she said something to me, God bearing me witness, you can ask Tara herself, she will tell you if she ever got the opportunity. She said, you know, every time you opened your mouth, you showed me a picture of a future I had to be a part of. And I'm going to be talking to the men about this, what every man should know before popping the question. And one of the things you have to know is that in a way, it is not your television that is going to impress the ladies, it's your vision. Because if you have the right vision, not only will you acquire television, but you'll put your wife on television. And the first time that Tara was ever going to be interviewed on NTA, she was interviewed as the wife of Fela Durutue. So I want you to understand that, that there are things that what marriage does essentially is the capacity to multiply the potential that each one of you is carrying. Now, the problem is, since one times one is the one that will give one, what about if one of you is half? So, one person has built himself or herself, and the other one is only half-baked. Half times one is equal to what? So, it means that, listen, in every marriage, one of you will draw the other one down to the lowest common denominator. So if you have one person who saves and is prudent with money and the other one is wasteful, together that family is not going to be a saving family. It's going to be a wasteful family because the way it works is that he's a multiplier. So the capacity of whoever it is that is coming in, the lower capacity is the one that the marriage will carry. So in a way, you've got to be careful because it's not as much of whether, you know, what you bring to the marriage will either secure the level of the marriage or it will diminish the level of the marriage. And your entire mission in, as being a single person, your entire mission is to make sure that you bring a whole person into that union. So the whole time of singlehood is, the cap, is that point where you are working on everything around you, about you. Remember that the Bible says for this reason a man shall leave to go and join his wife. Meaning that the man has a wife before he leaves. Now, let me quickly understand. There are two kinds of women in the Bible. There is the Proverbs 18 woman. He says, he that finds a what? Not he that finds a chico. Not he that finds a babo. He that finds a, has found a good thing. So a wife is a good thing. But you haven't become his wife yet. But she must be a wife before he can find her. So how do you become a wife without being married? In exactly what he said. You have to be a wife to be found only that when you become married, you become his wife. Does anybody hear what I'm trying to say? But Proverbs 19 speaks about something else. So the Proverbs 18 woman is the found woman. 
She is found by the effort of the guy. She becomes his wife. And the Bible says he obtains favor from the Lord. So the found wife, what does she bring her husband? I didn't hear you. But Proverbs 19 deals with another kind of wife. He says, a prudent wife is an inheritance, or it says houses and wealth are inherited from your parents, but a prudent wife is an inheritance from the Lord. So the prudent wife is different from the found wife. Because the prudent wife comes by inheritance, the found wife comes by effort of the man. So how do you receive an inheritance? I have never seen anybody, wicked or not, say to their children, I have two houses for you in Lagos. If you can find them, they are yours. Have you ever seen anybody do that? So that tells you that to a large extent, listen to this, inheritances are given by bequeathing, by information. Do you understand? Are you sure you get it? So even when I see the lady and I like her, I still have to go to the place where I can present her to the one who can give her to me as an inheritance. Because if I don't receive a word over her, she has not been given to me as an inheritance, therefore I have only found her. So you know that if I find her, the Bible says no problem, you will receive, oh I can't hear you now, but this woman who is inherited, how is she different from the found woman? So you go back to Proverbs 12 and verse 4, and the Bible says, this prudent wife, like, like Pastor Bola, she is a crown on her husband's head. Huh? So the found wife brings her husband a fair, but the inherited wife brings her husband a so this is what it means. The found wife makes her husband a favored prince, but the inherited wife makes her husband a king. So that tells you that the status of the inherited wife completely changes. In less than six months from marrying Tara, God had changed my status. And I'd moved out of a one-bedroom room that I was living for eight years, and I was now living in a two-bedroom flat in Victoria Garden City. And God opened the heavens and the earth for me to do it. My status changed. So let me help you understand it. One day Tara said to me, can you imagine if I had only waited for you to become? And what I found out is that many women are looking for a king and for him to be a king, she, he must have been crowned by another woman. So for you to find, listen to this, for you to find a king, he already belongs to somebody else. So stop looking for a king, ladies. Look for a prince that his head can carry your crown. And the only way his head will be able to carry the crown is that, don't forget, your crown is your glory. Your crown is your faith. Your crown is your business idea. Your crown is your vision. Your crown is the things, the kind of home you want to build. When you say it, the guy should be able to say, yes, baby, not only can we do that, we can also do this, we can also do this, we can also do this. When you tell him about your business idea, he says to you, you know what, by the, in fact, do you know that what also we can do this and you can also take it to this and by the time you are done, you can take it to this level. So Tara will say to you, when she met me, she had just started a business called Tara Makeovers. But that in the course of conversing with me, I said to her on the telephone one day, baby, you know, one of the things I see, I see this thing called, it's like a business, it's like a place where you can do makeup. She said, eh? A place? Makeup? Because makeup for her was a box. Going from place to place, doing other people. I said, no, you know that people can come to do makeup in your place and then they can, she said, what? I said, you know, I, I don't know, I just saw this thing and it's on it, it's like a house where people can come in, buy products, do this. She said, wow. She, I said, it's, it's House of Tara. And by the time we had done it and, 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 and pulled the thing together, boom, 
the first house of Tara office was the one that, my, that I was offered, my office that I was offered by Larry Olushola. Some of you know Larry Olushola. He wanted us to get a place together. And Larry asked me, and I was, as a consultant, I, was, I realized most of my work was being done in GT Bank and, and Zenith Bank and all of the things. I went to the banks to do my work. I didn't need an office as much as I needed a place for Tara. So the first place that was the house of Tara was supposed to be my office. And I said, no, baby, you have it in line with the dream. Do you understand? How women get a man that can multiply your dream. I still didn't yet have another office when we decided to have another shop in, in, in Ikeja. And I had three million naira that I had saved towards our own office. We were looking for an office in, you know, in, on this side. And then the Ikeja office came up. And Tara will tell you, I took the three million that we had to put it down for a second office for my wife. Listen, if the man who you are attracted to or who you are, you are connected to, if his head is not big enough to carry your crown, the crown would overshadow his eyes. And it would be too big for him and he would, he would do like this. What will happen to the crown? By the time a man starts becoming intimidated by your vision, you know he's not your guy. A guy that keeps quiet when you tell him what it is that you want to do, he's not your guy. His head is not big enough for the crown. There's another crown that is coming for him. Listen, every, every head has a crown their own size. Don't reduce the size of your crown for the head. No, oh, no, no, you didn't hear what I just said. Women, don't, don't ever reduce the size of your crown for a man's head. No. There is a crown for his head size. You understand what I'm saying? But the challenge is, listen to this, it's very important. The challenge is, ladies, you need to spend time building yourself. Not only in your most holy faith, but in the wholeness of your life. So that you can bring one to the favored prince that God has ordained for you to crown and make a king. Men, you need to develop yourself to be able to bring yourself to a place where by the time the crown arrives, your head is big enough to carry it. There are three kinds of men. I've talked about two kinds of women. And maybe I should just completely finish this. Men, which kind of wife do you want? Favored wife or inherited wife? I can't hear you. Now, let us find out. You know that Proverbs 31 verse 10 is the one that talks about this epitome of wifehood. Men, true or false? So the first question you're going to have to ask yourself is, this Proverbs 31 woman, is she a found woman or is she an inherited woman? I don't know whether it's possible for them to put it up so that this one you'll see it with your own eyes. Is it possible? I don't know. Can, can it be done? Proverbs 31 verse 10. Are you ready? Can, can they do it? If not, we can read it together. Let's go. One, two, three. So can she be found? Can she be found? Read it again. Can she be found? Can she be found? Give me another version if it's possible. And KJV if it's possible. Any other version. Can you? Is that the only one they have? Let's go. Give me another one. NIV. There's one that says, can she be found? Can she be found? Nobody can find this kind of woman. She cannot be found. She can only be... So the Proverbs 31 woman is not a found woman. She's an inherited woman. Meaning the grace to become a Proverbs 31 woman comes when God gives notification. The capacity for you to become that person. So there are two kinds of wives. What are they? Number one, the found wife and then... But there are three kinds of men.
three kinds of husbands. Women, do you want to know? Then maybe you need to come to the guys' section. The first one is what you call a hunter. In Yoruba, we call them paje. What a hunter does is to look for someone, a woman, who is doing very well. He looks for a woman who is doing well in her career, who is beautiful, who is luscious, who is sumptuous. He looks at this girl, she's got it all going on. And then he comes in, but as with every other hunter, hunters are intimidated by the prey that they catch. So a hunter can go out looking for an elephant, but once he catches the elephant, he doesn't want to keep the elephant. So what does he do? He kills the elephant and uses this carcass as his boast and pride. So when you see a hunter of a guy, three years after he has married his wife, when you see the woman, she's a shadow of herself. He married her. She had a vibrant career. Two years later, he has asked her to quit. That is because of this, your work, that you are not getting pregnant. So now she's at home. And she's sitting down every day. She's a shadow of herself. She used to be beautiful. She used to know how to do her makeup. And every time he looked at her, she was just the epitome of God's beauty on earth. But once he has married her, now he's asking, this is your makeup. Are you sure it's not too much? I mean, I think, is, is it not for me? Why are you doing makeup so that, is it so that other men can see you? And before you know it, for the sake of peace, she no longer puts her eyelashes. And, 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 and then she no longer puts, and before you know it, you look at her and you say, ah, ah, what happened? Well, what happened was she married a hunter. The second kind of man is called a scavenger. As you know, scavengers are, give me an example of animals or whatever. Vulture, thank you. Any other one? Hyena, God bless you. They eat dead things. So a scavenger of a man is looking for a lady who is dead. Somebody who has no self-esteem or low self-esteem, no vision, does not have any love in herself. She's looking for love, looking for somebody to take care of me. So that kind of person becomes, oh. The scavenger is also looking for someone that he does not have to overpower because she doesn't need, he's, she's already finished by herself. Scavenger of a man, a scavenger manager is always looking for those people that work in their companies that don't meet their target. So that he can say, oh, we're going to sack you. Please, sir, please, sir, don't sack me, please, sir. Say, okay, come and see me. Let's have a retreat at, 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 the, at Golden Gate, at Orienta. <laughs> Scavenger of a lecturer is always looking for students that don't pass. Because they're always looking for people who are needy. Who have no self-esteem, low self-esteem. And so whenever you see a man who is like that, you know that's the kind of guy he is. But the third guy. is called a gardener. What he does is he looks for a woman and he considers her to be seed. Knowing fully well that if he can plant her and nurture her and occasionally have to prune her and make sure that he enlightens her and he waters her, that she will become so much more. That kind of guy, no matter how well the lady is doing, he can see so much more for her. That kind of guy, nothing it is that she wants to be that he cannot be. Do you understand what I'm saying? So a gardener is the kind of guy that you don't have to find out whether he knows how to use his rake or not. It's not whether he can spin his rake like this. That's not how you know the worth of a gardener. All you have to do is look at his garden. I mean, no, let, let's... Look at my garden. And I will ask you, does it look like the garden of a hunter? Does it look like the garden of a scavenger? 
Do you know that the first man that God said it is not good to be alone, was he a hunter? No. Was he a scavenger? No. What kind of person was he? So it is, listen, if you are a man and you are intimidated by the success of women, it's still good for you to be alone. <laughs> if you are looking for a lady that has no self-esteem, low self-esteem, you are best to be alone. But if you know that God has planted you and given you a garden so that you are able to take her and multiply her so that everybody that sees her says, oh my God, I didn't even know that this your wife was this beautiful. If you can make a lady who, you, who was only a graduate and by three years, four years into your thing, she has gone to IS, ISEA, she has gone to, to Harvard, she has gone to LBS, she has, that is a hunter. Somebody say hunter. Oh no, sorry, oh, I got it wrong. That is a gardener. Somebody say gardener. I didn't hear you say gardener. Men, what kind of women do you want to marry? Inherited. Women, what kind of man do you want to marry? Men, what kind of women do you want to marry? What men? Women, shout it one time. This one time. One chance. So women, I want to tell you that by the time we are done with our own breakout session, I intend to present to you a group of gardeners. And I trust that by the time Pastor Bola is done, that there will be inherited women in this place. Wives of noble character that bring more than even just one to the table. They are multipliers. God bless Elevation Church for this hangout. Please, if you know that you are really grateful for the leadership of Pastor Godman and Pastor Paula, and the leadership of this house, I want you to give a shout that will let God know that they have been a blessing to you.